I think to sum up the success of this programme, it's really been about collaboration. Enthusiasm, and that's the enthusiasm that I've seen in the units that we've worked with. Inspiring. You get those clinicians who come back to you telling you amazing stories. I did it and it really works, so that's definitely inspiring. Woman-centric. This project has been designed about improving care for women and working with women, communicating with women, and that's what's so important. OASIS stands for Obstetric Anal Sphincter Injury and the challenge that we're seeking to address is to reduce the damage to the, uh, the anus and to the, the perineum from women following vaginal birth. This damage can leave women affected for the rest of their lives. So in terms of what really needed to change, we were realising that the rate of third and fourth degree tears was tripling. And also we realised that sometimes midwives and doctors were saying slightly different things, were giving different perspectives to women, and obviously we need to be speaking with one voice. It was a good way for us to work together, both doctors and midwives. Uh, it's about collaboration, and only if we work together can we actually improve care of women. We also know that currently the litigation rate due to OASIS is increasing. Now this has a huge financial impact on the National Health Service. And when we take into consideration costs, we also need to look at the cost for outpatient appointments, scans, investigations, and some of these women end up with major surgery. So it's really important that this whole package, the care bundle, was evidence-based. And that did take quite a long time to look at what interventions were evidence-based, which ones had the best evidence, then to choose which elements of the care bundle were most important. We've um, extended to 16 sites, but that's an awful lot of women still who aren't being looked after by healthcare professionals who've, who've had the advantage of knowing about this work and about the methods that we use. Well, we were first contacted by the RSUG to take part as a pilot site. We really wanted to be at the forefront of trying to make a difference. I, I think most trusts did realise at the time that it, the incidents was slightly increasing and we wanted to be one of the sites to actually make a difference and show that we can actually put women at the centre of care. Well, I see the women in the perineal clinic after they had a third and fourth degree tear and I, I really see what they suffer in terms of pain and, and their fears, um, anger. So this obviously makes me very passionate to be able to reduce the percentage um, of women who are affected by third and fourth degree tears. So part of the care bundle uh, was providing information to women antenatally and I know from interviews that we have conducted that women actually appreciated this. Because often women will ask you, why didn't anybody talk to me about this issue? Why wasn't I informed? And so what we um, really tried hard to do was to give the staff in the units both the resources and the knowledge to be able to roll out the care bundle. So we gave practical resources um, and we also gave them all of the evidence base for the interventions and were available to answer any questions that they might have about that evidence base. We are very proud of the fact that we've done something to help women who have previously been suffering in silence. We do know that there's a big stigma around sphincter injuries and often historically women have not wanted to talk about this. Historically the media has not wanted to acknowledge that this is an issue either. And I'm really pleased that I think we're finally beginning to encourage women to trust us enough to speak up about this issue and that we're doing whatever we can to remove the stigma. It has given me the confidence to actually have a discussion with the women about that this is a potential risk. And, but also it's given me the confidence to say that actually we can do something to reduce that risk. And um, I also see women antenatally, so I make also specialist birth plans for women who are at increased risk and um, encouraging change. Uh, but not only with clinicians, also with the women. So women need to be also more perineal aware and pelvic floor aware um, to empower them so that they can also make better choices. We are about to embark on a massive change. Uh, and this will spark conversation amongst patients and healthcare professionals. Um, and if we discuss this further, we can only get better. I think it's been a really, really good example of how two teams can come together um, to improve outcomes for women. And moving forward, um, I'm really hopeful 
that midwives and obstetricians will be able to do further work of this nature. And the final word I'd use is forensic. That we've actually examined this in huge detail to try and show where we can get the minor elements of improvement which if added together will make things better. We are waiting for the results and I'm really excited to share the results with everybody because I know that once we have these results out we are going to be able to implement the OAC care bundle all over with midwives, with doctors and this certainly, I strongly believe that this will reduce the OAC rates.